Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's bit of a reaction to the Springbok squad that was announced yesterday. We're going to be looking at five players who are potentially unlucky not to be going on tour with the box and uh, big calls that had to be made um, by Rusty Erasmus. And these are not necessarily just players who I think had to be there, for example, necessarily players who should be there in terms of being better than the ones that have been selected. I don't think the squad that's been selected gets much stronger, to be honest. Uh, you know, a couple of injuries, maybe, but apart from that, it is basically a full strength box squad. And uh, Rusty Rasmus, I think, has laid down the gauntlet a little bit to say that if you want to go on tour, you need to actually start taking that spring box jersey away from the other players. You know, he's not just going to move players on for the sake of moving them on. You're going to have to go and take that jersey out, which I think is a very good way of doing it. You know, his reaction to this Ash Fami Gomez really incident where he kind of didn't disclose his injury, saying that nobody in the squad at sort of 90% is better than anybody else in the squad who's 100%, is basically talking about the fact that, you know, and he's spoken a couple of times, the fact that a Springbok B team, inverted commas, could probably beat a Springbok A team, you know, if they have the right sort of day. And that that is how close these players are. And that's why I think, you know, I don't think the, just, the reaction is justified for this whole, oh, the squad's old, we've got to replace them. No, a lot of the squad will make the next World Cup. We're in the first year out of the World Cup and in the next World Cup cycle. We still have an additional two more full years before we enter a World Cup year. So there's a lot of time to build depth. And at the end of the day, it's not just about giving players caps for the sake of it. It's saying, if you want to be a Springbok, come and take that opportunity. Come and take that jersey off of the current incumbent player. You know, if you want to be the Springbok number 12, for example, you need to go and take that jersey off Damien Delendi. If you want to be the Springbok, uh, you know, number four, you've got to go and start outplaying Ibn Etzebeth. That is the standard to which we have to play and players have to play to, to be able to get to that. So this is a couple of, of players who I've, I've picked up from some of the reaction that people are talking about and the likes. Obviously, there's a lot more and uh, we'll talk about some of the other names as we get towards the end of the video. Before we get to the player number one, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, let's start in the front row, shall we? And I'm going to talk about Vilko Low. I think tight head is a position I spoke about in my live show yesterday that sticks out as one that we need to start looking at other options sooner rather than later. Not to say that, you know, France Mahomes and Vincent Koch are completely past it. Both players not particularly young and uh, should they start picking up injuries, we will need other options. Now, Vilko Low seems to be the next in line alongside the likes of Nietzsche Bashir, for example. Um, although I do have another tight end on this list. And um, he's very unlucky. I think he's just unlucky due to the fact that he's playing behind Franz Mahobi, who I think is one of the most underrated tight heads of all time. And Vincent Koch, who's a top, top player. Moving on next year, I would really like to see him in the mix. Uh, or at least another tight head in the mix. I think Thomas Dutoy at the moment, covering one and three, deserves it. You know, he was fantastic in the premiership last season. I think he's going to be pretty solid when he's had a chance with the box, but I do think Volko Lowe is someone who, who is very unlucky not to be involved with the way he's played for the Bulls in the last year since coming back. Another one's a bit of a fan favorite. That is Sanele Nahamba. Lots of people asking about his inclusion and uh, why he's not being given an opportunity. Now, he has been part of a lineman camp, so he's not far off the radar. The problem is people talk about him covering 9 and 10, and I don't think we'll ever see Sanele Nahamba at 10 for the box Um realistically you know Fafta Klerk has, has, has filled in there but even that wasn't ideal but Fafta Klerk is also one of the best defensive lines in the game so then the Humber not to say that he's you know he doesn't act hot enough but he is very very small and not so like, not, and you talk about oh that doesn't matter for Kirk Lawrence or Chesney Colby he's even smaller than that and defensively you know at in the 10 especially at international level you've got to have a very big solid um, player who's defensively good. Mani Ebox is a very good defensive player. Sash Fami Gomez is a phenomenal defensive player. Andre Pollard has, you know, changed the game with how good his defense is. And I don't think we'll ever see Zane and Hamba at, at 10 for the box. At 9, is there an argument? I think there's a reasonable argument for him there, to be honest. I think I look at some of the games Kuba Shana's had this year. I look at the way Zane and Hamba changes games when he plays for the Lions. He is X-Factor. He is Grant Williams type of, uh, you know, can create something out of nothing, but even to a certain degree, a bit more. Grant Williams is the X factor, the pace he has. You know, Senna hamba has got vision. He, he sees things, he sees gaps, he creates moments. And uh, I think somebody of his creativity could definitely add a lot to that box squad. I think he is quite unlucky not to be more in the mix, but I think, 
You know, more from Berg ahead of him at the moment from a scrum point of view. That's from a tactical point of view. It's all around work. Sandy in the Humber is not necessarily the tactical uh, player that Jaden Hendrickson is, but he is a live wire scrum half. You can create something out of nothing. Probably the biggest omission is Ka no Cameron Harnacombe. Very, very unlucky, I think, that, um, and this is talk about opportunities and getting your timing right. Albert Lowe was not part of the spring market mix. I think if you say in June right now, if you sat with us Erasmus and said between Cameron Harnacombe, Albert Lowe, who's ahead? Who would you want to see come the end of your tour? Rassi Erasmus would probably tell you Cameron Harnacombe. But he got injured. Albert Lowe didn't. Albert Lowe got called up due to a couple other injuries. He took his chances. He played really well. Now he's going on tour. And that is the reality of sport. You've got to take your chances when you get them. And you've got to, and at the end of the day, there's a certain amount of luck. So Cameron Harnacombe, not saying it's his fault, but was he, were he fit, I think you would have seen a debut from him earlier. And if he has a good debut, he stays in the mix. Albert Lowe, called up, stays in the mix. Ruan Okia, called up, plays very well. He's now stayed in the mix. And he's ahead of somebody he's going to talk about next. So this is amazing how timing can be absolutely everything in a box career. For me, it's a, a matter of time until he, he plays for the box. I think he gets capped next year in June, July. Providing he stays fit. The way he's playing for the ball started off really well. I think he can cover six, can cover eight. Really good breakdown threat. A clever, clever player as well. So I think he's destined to play many games for the box. Still so, so young. So not like we need to be rushing him. But uh, very unlucky, I think, with the way that his year was going. And then the way his year then transpired not to be more involved and to be on the plane over there. Similarly, I think Jean Claim. We're talking about a player who a year ago, almost to the day, by the way, played a World Cup final and won the World Cup with the box. He's back to full fitness, playing for Munster. He's 31 years old. He easily gets to the next World Cup. Um, in a position, a the tight head lock, which we have been a, a shortage of, Salman Murad has not really stepped up and yet does not get the call up for the end of year tour. Very, very unlucky. Uh, the goal with Ruan Nokia, you know, with, he's played well and he's, and he's really uh, stood up. But um, I think that we won't see a 6-2 a split with, 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 with four locks with a Ruan Nokia, whereas we would. With Jean Clay. That is the four locks we saw in the World Cup final last year. We saw Ibn Etzebeth Franco Master starting with Jean Clay and Arkes Naming coming off the bench. Very surprised that he hasn't been given the call up. I think he's quite lucky. I know he's been injured and obviously getting back to full fitness, but uh, quite surprised that he wasn't included and hasn't been brought back in the mix because for me, he's the closest we have to an Ibn Etzebeth replacement as, as it stands right now. Um, so I think that was a bit of a surprising one for me. Last one, a bit of an outside shot. Lots of people calling for Asanati and Klavakanye. Such an interesting player because he's a player who, when he first came through, a bit like Franz Bohova, everybody rolled their eyes and said, he's too heavy, you can't be that size, you know, he's fat, he's not mobile enough. And thankfully, people actually watch rugby every now and again. He has been phenomenal for the Lions for a while now. And uh, I also think, I think it's a matter of time before he plays for the box. I think him, Vilko Loeb, and uh, Thomas Detroit will compete for that tight head shot. Yeah, and, and Nitli Bashir as well. Um, but I think that they will be the front runners for that tight head spot. I think he is so, so good. He's 25 years old. He's coming into the peak of his powers. For the man of his size, he gets around the park. He, he's always very high up on tackle charts, for example. Scrummaging under Julian Redley Hayes is sublime. I think he'll play in many games for, for the box. And he has been in the alignment camp. So it's not like he's outside of the radar. He is in and around that radar for the box. And um, <clears throat> would have loved, loved, loved to have seen him involved. I really hope we do see him involved next year. I think he's a tremendous player. And I think, he sh I think he's going to have a very bright um, career ahead of him um, with the box. Those are my five players. Uh, there are other players. Out there. You, know, you can name a lot of players. Ruben van Heerden, I think, is playing good rugby. I think Morning van den Berg, if you're going to back him, you know, bring him on tour and get him more experience over there. You know, I think somebody like Edel van der Merwe is very unlucky not to be in the mix. Warwick Lantz playing tremendous rugby once again. Uh, where do you fit him in? It becomes sort of the, the problem. So there are lots of players out there who are playing some great rugby and maybe deserve a call-up, but obviously it can only be a 34-man squad. So let me know which players you would have liked to have seen in the squad down in the comments below. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.